All right, y'all, I gotta show you something. This is a first for me, but it's gonna be really fun. Look at all of this gear. This is a future pedal board based around the HX Stomp. That's right, I had a subscriber reach out to me and say, hey, I wanna build a board, but I actually want you, Jimmy, to build it. Would you be able to do that? And I was like, yeah, of course I would do that. I love doing that, plus, my Hey Worship Leader crew loves watching videos about pedal board builds. I think there's some interesting things about this board that we're gonna learn together, so let's dig in. All right, so we have this rock board pedal board by Warwick. I've never, none of this is sponsored, by the way. This is just an individual who bought all the stuff and sent it to me so I could build it and send it back to him. But this is the pedal board Trace 3.0 gig bag included. I gotta take care of all these boxes. It's gonna be shipping it back to him. Rock board, really nice. And here's the pedal board. Very nice. Wow, this is uh, really light and really nice. I love this, and it's got this hole right here. And what's gonna go in there, let me find it, is the Rockboard Mod 3 version two. Let's open this thing up. I mean, it's like Christmas. I love this stuff. Oh, there it is. So this will get mounted somewhere like that in there. I bet this comes out. I'll read the instructions later, but this gets mounted in there. It has these access points on the back, and that way he can just plug in his power. He doesn't have to worry about plugging it into the power supply, which we will look at next. It also has XLR out, so he can just, we have some adapters that are gonna come out of the HX Stomp uh, quarter inch, go in XLR, that way he can just go XLR out stereo or mono, and then we have some of these others that we can get into. So let's see what's next. Let's start at the beginning. We have a Keeley compressor. Ooh, that is nice. I like that color. I mean, that's pretty. I had a Keeley four knob compressor a long time ago, just like the silver one. I enjoyed it, but I really didn't feel like I needed it back then. It was before I really understood compression, and so I ended up getting getting rid of it. And that, look, that looks nice. This is the Voodoo Lab Pedal Power Times 8. This one on the website says that it can run the uh, HX Stomp with the current doubler, which we also have. Future editing Jimmy here. We actually ended up switching to the Chalks DC7 because this power supply doesn't have that IEC cable uh, input so that we could use the whole rock board adapter thingy. So we just went ahead and switched. You know, this is heavier because it actually has the IEC cable input right on it. With this, you have to have an adapter that goes to it. There's all these cables. Next, we have the Dunlop Volume X Mini. This is the one I have. It's a volume and expression. It doesn't need to be powered. Um, so I love this thing and it works so well. It even has, I mean, it's nice and small for compact boards like this. And it even comes with a little Allen wrench here so that you can um, tighten the band. And the other good thing about this, if you've ever been, if you ever used the like, the Ernie Ball stuff, that string over time can break, but this is a band drive. So it doesn't, it doesn't have the threat of breaking and you can adjust the, the tension with this thing. Really cool, love that pedal. All right, what's next? Some pedals, we have some Jet pedals here. We have the Jet Micro, let's take a look at it. You guys know I am a fan of some Jet pedals and uh, I, the Jet Micro was my, my gateway into MIDI as I like to call it and this is the one that started it all and now there's the new version. This thing is just really amazing so I'm gonna leave that out there. If you're new to the channel and you've never seen any of my videos before, you probably haven't seen my pedal board, it's right here. This is the, my HX Stomp mini midi pedal board hx stomp becos effects comp iq there's the jet mcx which is the big brother to the micro this is a fully customizable midi controller the jet revelation blackout edition and the jackson audio broken arrow 2 everything run into the midi box 4 underneath and the dc7 on a mono light plus i believe love that pedal board all right and we have this a white revelation version 2 with midi Ooh. A blue Jet Pedals pick. I probably shouldn't have shown this because now I gotta give it to him. A blue Jet Pedals pick, nice. All right, so here is the full MIDI version. It's got the, the TRS jack on the top there. And then we have a slew of JHS pedals. Right here, let's do this one first. This one is called the Prestige. And this brings back so many memories. I had a Prestige years and years and years ago when I was just running through just my Blues Junior and I was starting to create a pedal board. I saw some videos about this thing. I think it started off as the Magician, or it was a black one. It was like a, just a little black pedal. But then they count this gold one here, and it's just one knob. And I remember running this into my uh, Blues Junior, and it just made it sound 
so good. I think it also acts as a buffer, which is probably the main thing, but it also has this boost on it. But um, back in the day, I didn't have a good pedal, I didn't have a good pedal power supply. Back then, I was just running through like a, a daisy chain situation, and even though it sounded good, I had this like, it, it, it had some noise to it, whether it was just this pedal or all my pedals, and I was like, oh, I love this thing, but I, I, I can't afford to buy a better power supply. And so I ended up just selling it, and I kind of regretted it. So now I'll get to play through it again and see if it lives up to the expectation that I remember having with it. All right, what next? Morning Glory version four, okay. Oh, look at this, a Morning Glory in all of its glory. I had a Morning Glory only in that I had a version three double barrel, which had uh, like a, I don't know, like a tube screamer on one side and the, the Morning Glory on the other. And this thing just looks really nice. I've never actually held one of these original, like the, the brown box one, gold, whatever that is in my hand and then it has the remote which that's this right here so that's the other pedal it's got the red remote and it's got a high cut huh a little toggle switch in there that's pretty cool can't wait to can't wait to play with that let's go ahead and open the red remote there it is jhs pedals red remote and lastly we have the at plus boost drive volume eq air i've never really even looked this up so we're gonna have to figure out what all these things do and and how they sound. So there are all the pedals. Let's kind of, uh, let's place them on the board, kind of see if we even have room. So something like that was the plan, getting it all in there. I will work with it and see if there's a better way. There's a lot of buttons real close here, so we will work on it. All right, now let's dig into some of these special cables that we had to get. We have two Ghostfire solderless patch cable kits. I'm very familiar with these. It's what I've used on my board. It's what I've done. It's what I've used on several of the boards that I've given away. If you guys don't remember, I gave away an HX Stomp pedal board um, at the end of last year. Here we have, let's see. Oh, this is our TRS to XLR that's gonna go into the back of this. Come out of the HX Stomp, go into the back of there. That way he can go XLR out. And what's here? Oh, this is for the, the IEC cable, I think. Trip light. This fits into the back of here like this. This will go into all the power supply stuff underneath the board. Hopefully I can make it all nice and neat. That way when he arrives on Sunday, he can just plug his power cable into there. We have some uh, two rolls of dual lock. Now we have the, uh, the pedal power cable. This is the HX Stomp current doubler. Editing Jimmy here again. This cable is for the previous power supply that we're not using, but this, this information that's coming is very important, so I wanted to leave it in the video. So if you don't know, if you're watching this video and you don't know this, the HX Stomp has some, uh, a little bit different power needs. It takes like 900 uh, milliamps of power to start, and a lot of these only have 500 at max, right, right here, 500 per port. And so what you need is a, not a voltage doubler, but a current doubler to come out of the HX stomp, this blue piece right here, and go in and take up two ports of the power supply. And that splits the current that the HX stomp needs. And these barrels that fit this is a 2.1 millimeter barrel. Not that you're gonna be able to see that on here, but 2.1 millimeter barrel. But the HX stomp needs a 2.5, so it's a little bit bigger. And they did that intentionally so that people wouldn't plug in the wrong power supply and fry their HX stomps. And it's the same power requirements for the XL and the Pod Go, by the way. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to install the uh, Rockboard Power. This is the Mod 3. And so we're going to put it in front of the board. We removed the white plastic thing out of the front right here. And the next thing that the website says to do, the instructions, is take these screws and put them in this hole right here. I said they are self tapping. They should just go ahead and thread these. I don't understand. I mean, self tapping, I'm pushing, it ain't even grabbing. Cut that one in. Now we can just slide this in here. All right, so I got the little uh, nuts attached, which was maybe one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. A little bit complicated there, but that's okay. We got it. All right, we're back at it. We had to wait on some other cables to come in, but I think I've got a good position. I'm ready to put the HX stomp down on the board with some dual lock. So this is dual lock. If you don't know what dual lock is, it's a lot like the technology of Velcro, but a little more advanced, I would say. Where Velcro has like hook and loop, um, you have the, the loop side, which is a lot like this. It's 
plasticky, hard, it has a bunch of loops, and then it connects to more of a fabric-y side that has a lot of the, the, the loops, hook, loop, and it sticks. Pros of that is that it can be easy to remove, you can scoot things over a little bit easily, but the downside is that your pedals tend to wiggle a little bit because there's a little bit of wiggle room in that fabric, where this is like locked on. It's hard on both sides, it doesn't really stick. You have to push it in and then you can peel it off like this and it just comes apart, but it doesn't stick. You have to lock it in like that. And there's pros and cons. It's a lot firmer of a feel, but I have noticed if you if you don't do enough, especially on like little small pedals, it'll tend to break the seal, which is a con compared to like uh, regular Velcro because you're not really breaking anything. It might move a little bit, but this, once the connection is broken, it's just flopping around. And so I've experienced that before on some smaller pedals, but we'll make sure we put enough where it needs to go. I always like to put two together and then put it on my pedal and then place it exactly where I like it on the pedal board. Peel it off and you're ready to stick it. I wanted to point out that I used this, this cable by uh, Jet Pedals. It's a uh, five pin to quarter inch TRS MIDI cable. And you can unscrew this and turn it into eight different positions. And I kind of did a little diagonal position because I want to be able to plug it in, but not cover up the headphone out jack of the HX Stomp right there. It's the little things. And also I got my um, XLR cables that are underneath plugged in right here and there they are right there can still reach the other jacks and now we have our HX stomp on the board so I'm gonna go ahead and prep some dual lock for these other pedals and we'll be back uh, just checking in here almost done with the dual lock on all these uh, depending on which way they are facing on this grid here on the pedal board is determining whether I run them straight or sideways uh, and I want the most the most surface space that I can possibly get so that it's a nice strong hold all right the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my patch cables ready for the revelation because I know that's going here and it's just in the effects loop so I have this TRS on this side coming out of the stereo send of the HX stomp going into the left and right tip and ring of the revelation right there and I want to get this fastened so I want to go ahead and make this loop and be done with those two pedals so what we have here are ghost fire solderless patch cables now I know there's a big opinion about solderless versus soldering your own cables and that's all fine and dandy I know that if you're traveling the world and you want the best of the best and you have time to solder your own stuff and you know how to do that, which I don't, I should learn. It's probably not that hard. I've actually soldered some stuff before, but that's not what we're doing. We've agreed to use solderless cables and I really like this Ghostfire set. So it's pretty easy and that's what we're going to do. And I've used these solderless cables on my pedal board for three years now and have had zero problems. What's cool is it comes with its own like little magnetic um, screwdriver and this little thing that helps you cut everything precisely the right way. So you need to make a clean cut, which it probably already has a clean cut, but I'm just going to make sure. Now they've updated these since I have had them. Mine didn't have this little feature where they actually have a hole in the cap as well. In case you wanted to do just straight, you could do that. Before it was just right angle and you could go in this little housing here and bend it as much as you want but we could go straight, but here I wanna go straight down. So we're still gonna make our right angle. You take this and you push it and you can feel it, it like it slips on a bit and you can bend it over. And then there's a screw hole and you put the screw in there. And there's our cable. Nice. Let's see if the effects loop works. It's 
really hard to uh, keep building this pedal board with each of the pedals because I'm gonna be so tempted to play all the time. But yes, it works like a charm. I said this earlier, but I wanna make sure that with these little pedals, I go all the way to the edge with the dual lock so that it doesn't wanna rock at all. Uh, the first time I did this, I kept it away from the edge because I thought, ooh, that looks cleaner. I don't really wanna see the dual lock, but that's not as important as the fact that it needs to be sturdy. Now that's sturdy. Let me just say again, in the topic of soldered versus solderless cables, um, let me just give you a voice of reason from the other side, from real life experience. Um, is soldered better? Yeah, sure, it is. I mean, you're soldering it together. You don't have uh, as many fail points. And I watch channels like Rhett Scholl, which just came out with a pedal board video like a little while ago, and he was like, soldered cables are the way to go and the dude from vertex effects and i totally agree with him but i will say you're not doing anything wrong by going solderless because i've been using it for years never had one of these fail and my tone is fantastic <laughs> um but if you can't you don't want to don't feel like you're doing something wrong all right now i've mentioned this in another video but if you have this dunlop volume x mini sometimes uh you'll go from heel to toe and expression will go heel zero a hundred back to zero and it's like what's what's happening it's frustrating i have found a little trick if you take this off there are two dip switches the top one is for the aux and it's either goes tuner or go this direction for expression and then this bottom one is tip and ring and i find if you leave it on ring actually you have to switch it it comes both of mine or mine and this one came with tip engaged and i took it off and put it on ring and that's going to help us have the least amount of issues all right so i put this protective black thing down on my desk so i could flip the pedal board over mm. oh it's good i want one of these uh, we're going to do some cable management underneath so we have these longer cables for the xlrs that i'm going to need to tuck away over here all right, we got the power supply mounted. Now we need to zip tie some stuff. All right, so it's Wednesday and I gotta go to rehearsal soon. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and play through this board this week and this weekend just to make sure that it holds up. Before I send this thing off in the mail, I wanna make sure that everything is good and there are no issues. And I'm also going to load up like all of my presets, all of my custom IRs, the expanse pack, the essentials pack, and all my tone match presets onto this device, or at least give him access. I won't fill up everything because there's a lot of presets in there. If you don't know about those products, go to heyworshipleader.com or click the link in the description. And you can check out what would be right for you if you own a device like this. Updates are available for your HX stop. Yeah, so let's update this together. You have to sign in if you've never done that before. Now it's downloading. Create backup. Now I'm gonna load all my presets on here, but the preset that I made, uh, I'm going to, I really liked it. <clears throat> so I drug it over here and I'm gonna try my new IR. I, I actually combined two of my PV Classic 30 IRs together, had a channel one, channel two, and I blended them and did a little bit of EQ based on what I just wanted in the moment, and it created this like Frankenstein IR that I really, I really love. So we'll, I'll drag that in there and see if I like it. It will now update your firmware device to the latest version. This process may take a few minutes. Update. Oh, I think I can do a stopwatch now or something. I may fast forward this, but you can see how long it'll take. While we're looking at that, let's take a look at the board. Uh, but let me go signal flow. We plug into this Sweetwater Special Keely Compressor Plus. I love this thing, man. It sounds really good. We go from there down to the Andy Timmons. I'm loving this thing. To the Morning Glory with the red switch. Into the last thing, the Boost, the Prestige. It's also a buffer. Then I leave the Prestige and go to the Dunlop Mini. Uh, editing Jimmy here again, uh, something is different since I recorded that. I originally ran this board uh, with the Dunlop as a volume pedal, not as expression, 
but uh, then I took that out of the chain and just made it expression. So instead of leaving this and going in here as a volume pedal, I actually unplug those and we just go and use this straight as expression. That way he can choose when to use expression one, expression two, and volume within the pedal itself. Because if you hook this up as a volume pedal and expression over there, uh, as soon as you do this, you lose signal. So had to had to redo that. I mean, I knew that, but I just got ahead of myself. Then coming out, stereo TRS into the Revelation, which puts that in the effects loop. And then I'm really liking this Mod 3 adapter for the Rockboard board, because um, you can just access anything you want right here on the front. I was able to keep all the cables inside the pedal board, so nothing is going to stick out and get grabbed. They have this little hole right here that I was able to get the power through. And I actually, and I've spoken bad about these before, but I was actually able to use the Rockboard MIDI cable and they are low profile and we definitely needed it on this board. We had some space restraints and the MIDI cable I was going to use would have come out of the micro here and been at least double the thickness, which would have pushed that up, which would have pushed these pedals up past the front. And I don't like having stuff hanging off the edge. So we were able to, you know, you can see how that's like just barely hanging off, but nothing is gonna like get kicked or snapped off. And it fits on this board pretty well. All right, so there we are. We've done everything. Let's go ahead and go to heyworshipleader.com and I'll show you how to download the Expanse Pack. For you members, uh, if you're not a member, you go to the store, go to Line 6 Stuff, check it out. I got a Pod Go for Worship course, check that thing out. Expanse Packs for all, all of the devices. You go down here, you can actually hear some sound samples. There's the devices I have the Expanse Pack for. Ever growing collection of presets, pay once, it's not a subscription, you get the spiel. And then the Essentials Pack, which is for just these four here. Um, I developed some of my um, Tone Match presets and I dialed in some of the new Stock Cab presets and those are all just 10 like ready to go premium presets. They sound really good. And then I have my Tone Match presets from these amps right here and you can get the bundle as well. I already have all these so I'm just going to log in. And we want the Expands Pack for the HX Stomp. There it is. Instead of filling up everything with the whole Expanse Pack, I'm going to just put some of my favorite and some of the most recent stuff. One of the things I like to do, if you go to, let's see, where is it? Window, settings. I like having this go from 1 to 125, from 0 to 125. That's just me. That's what I like doing. That way I can just see my numbered presets. Here are the previous updates. Let's go ahead and put all the IRs in. I mean, these pads presets, you gotta have those. Pads 2, my favorite. I have one base preset. And then all-in-one presets, which you can see them all here. The derailed presets, I like those. I also enjoy this Fawn preset. It was one of my first ones. This matchstick is really good. The new Jazz is good. These parallel, really ambient ones are really good. Let's just pick a couple more. The Rocker, these worship templates are good. Okay, so that's the Expanse Pack. There's a bunch more in there. You, you got the Acoustic. The ones that make your electric sound like an acoustic. But I also have the Essentials Pack. We'll just put all the Essentials Pack in here. And then we have the Tone Match presets. One thing I don't like is like if I dialed in this cab, or I've dialed in the amp, if I go switch to just amp, it moves everything back. I don't like that. Spend all the time dialing it in. I just don't want the cab anymore. I want the IR. It should allow me to like save it or something. All right, let's plug things up and see how they sound. Got my new XFX wireless guitar system here. I love, I love that system. It's, it's so good. New XFX is killing it. All right, so here's the preset I had dialed up that I really enjoyed. Now let's go see how it sounds with the IR. That sounds good. So let me talk about this Jet Micro right here for just a minute. If you hold long press, it um, switches snapshots for you right there. That's long press. You can like hold for different banks and, um, oh, that must be the tap and tuner bank, I think. Yeah. So you can tune and then you hit this to escape. And then if you do that twice, it goes to, to green. I was, I was there already. 
And that's like for the looper. And then you can also scroll up and down presets. So I'm gonna save this preset real quick, which is how I use uh, my MCX, which is like the customizable one. I got, I got used to the micro so much that I just set up my MCX to do what the micro does, plus some other things. All right, so here's how we can control this. We put this here, we want bypass assign, we turn the knob, we want this one. Then we page over and we say learn. And it learned it. And now it turns it on and off. I like it. things that I normally do with my HX stomp that I'm going to do for him and they are in the global settings. So we're going to go to global settings and let's take a look at a few of these. We want instrument in and out. Yes. Return type. We want it to be return. If I wanted to play music through the return, I would do that there. Everything looks good there. I switch this to headphones only so that this doesn't matter. That way that doesn't get bumped. Analog bypass or DSP, I do analog. Snapshot edits, recall or discard. I always use discard, which how you can tell is if your um, snapshots are red or gray. But I'm gonna leave his on, um, and I might start trying this too, on recall, because I notice I have to save every time. Basically, it's like if you make if you make an adjustment and you leave, it auto saves. And I always thought, oh, I don't wanna do that in case I mess something up. But I find myself having to save a lot, and so this might save me some time. Um, tempo pitch. So when you might notice, makes those weird sounds. Uh, we do transparent. So you don't get those weird sounds. Uh, the preset numbers, I switch those from banks to uh, numbers. That's how I like it. Foot switches, I'm gonna leave this on tap and tuner. This can do that, but I like doing it here. And I like to touch to select. Yes, we want that. We'll leave all that where it is. There's our MIDI channel. MIDI through, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. Auto clock, transmit MIDI clock, sure. We'll just do it that way. Tempo select, if it's per preset or do you want it per snapshot, you can use a snapshot, like each snapshot for a different song if you want. I'm gonna leave it on preset for now, not global. Snapshot CC, I'm gonna leave that right now. And then we want everything to be right, just like that. All right, we're testing out the board. Here it is. Here are the sounds. My new favorite lick. I like it. All right, it's time to ship the pedal board to the customer. It's been fun. 
Well, I can't believe it. I got it all in one huge, big, heavy box. So, I'm gonna pack it up tight and send it. Well, there you have it. The pedal board build is over. I'm about to ship it out. I used it on Wednesday and Sunday and it just, it just sounded great. Got to go stereo XLR out. It's everything I would want and it's got me thinking about my next project, my next personal project. So if you wanna see that, I already have some stuff on the way and I'm excited about it. And this pedal board build made me think through some of the things that I want. So if you wanna see that, click the like button down below, subscribe, make sure you don't miss it. I'll see you in the next video, bye. Oh, 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 oh,